So in this video, we will look into how we can have interrupts working within the framework of Priotos. Now let's understand a little bit how the interrupt works. Um, let's say we have two tasks. We have task one and we have task two, and this is the scheduler. And there's switching going on between the tasks uh, by the scheduler. And whenever there is an interrupt signal. Uh, the program counter or the CPU will will move the program counter from any either of the task. It could be maybe it was inside a particular task or it could be inside a particular in, inside the scheduler. The CPU will force itself to go and start servicing the ISR. So and then the ISR might have some pieces of code that is running. And this piece of code could be very long and it might also have a blocking code that it stays there with some if and else condition that if something happens until then just stay there. So it might be stuck inside the ISR. So if the CPU is locked within the ISR, neither the scheduler will be running, neither any of the tasks. So the task they start something called starvation. They will start star starving and none of your tasks will work. So you need to make sure that your ISR has a code which is very short. You do not want the codes inside your ISR really long. So what we do that is we create another task for the interrupt and all the pieces of code that we are supposed to have inside the ISR, we take them and we move them inside the interrupt, inside this new task that we have created. And we just write a few pieces of line inside the ISR to make sure that the ISR is really short. And I'm going to show you what exactly are those lines that we are going to work on. So <clears throat> let's imagine that I have these two functions here. Um, now you, you really don't need to understand what these functions are, but just in short, this function here is button initialization because this example, I'm going to use a development board, the Nucleo STM32F4, where there's a button on board uh, and pressing the button will generate the interrupt signal. So these codes here is basically doing the initialization of that button and this is where the interrupt service routine uh, codes are to be written so this is the ISR interrupt service routine so anything that I want to do here maybe you know if I press the button it will just say print F U press a button so this is what I want to have I want the program to do and in my main I need to initialize the button so button but uh, I said that I cannot have very long pieces of code inside the uh, ISR and even printf itself it might take a lot of clock cycles so it might be stuck inside the ISR for a very long time so so what I need to do is I need to create another task and I'm going to call it my interrupt task it's going to be exactly as any other task that you create and you will also have an have an infinite loop and this piece of code whatever you are supposed to do here you take it out and you put it inside the inside this infinite loop and I don't want this task to be running like any other task I don't want it to like start printing you press the button within the infinite loop or without me even pressing the button so the first thing that I do is I will suspend the task so the task suspend and if I use null it means I'm going to suspend itself so the task will suspend itself and obviously I need to create a handler for the task uh, I'm going to call it my int task handle and I also need to create the task this is the name of the task I will call it int task and the handler is my int task handle okay so I've created the task and uh, whatever I want to do I have written here which is uh, I want to sorry here I want to print you press the button so the task will start running and it will suspend itself and it will wait for an external signal for the task to resume and print this 
instruction and then again suspend itself. So every time it will wait for an external signal which we are going to provide from this ISR. Now in the ISR to, to give that signal for the, for the task to resume itself, there, there are three lines of code that I'm going to write and um, you just need to follow the steps here. So the first line is base time underscore t check if yield required. So I've created a variable and I called it check if yield required and its type is base time underscore t. And the value of this is going to be x task resume from ISR where the parameter is going to be the handler that I've created for this new task and the third line is going to be port port yield from ISR and I'm going to use this variable here so right now if I run this program So I have my task one running, which is printing hello world, and I'm going to press a button. And let me show you um, what happens when I press the button here. So this is the development board that I'm using, and this is the emulator that I use for uh, real-time debugging. And this blue button is the button that I've used for generating the interrupt signals. So if I press the button, you see uh, on this window here, it says you pressed a button. So every time I press it, it says you pressed a button. So it's working, everything is working fine. And this is how you make sure your interrupt is working fine when you're using free autos.